In my opinion, positive EV sports betting is the number one way to make consistent profit sports betting. I've personally made over $50,000 in the last year and a half and have been profitable for 17 straight months using positive expected value strategy. During this time period, I have placed over 20,000 positive EV sports bets and have wagered close to a million dollars. This sample size is plenty big enough for me to use as proof that positive EV betting actually works. As a beginner sports better, you are often fed the idea that only way to make a lot of money sports betting is by hitting massive parlays. These sports books promote these massive winning parlays when someone hits big because it's great advertising for them. It is their way to convince customers that anyone can hit a life-changing amount of money by placing some outrageous parlay. Let me tell you something, the sports books are not your friends. The odds are so astronomically stacked up against you and if you keep trying to hit massive parlays, you're just handing over your hard-earned cash to these sports books. I'm here to tell you that there is a much better way. The sports books do not want you to know that they can consistently be beat by positive expected value betters. I'm going to quickly explain positive EV betting in a nutshell, but if you want to learn or have a much better answer to this question, check out the video I made called Positive EV Sports Betting Explained. It goes into much more detail than what I'm about to go in. Positive EV betting works by using sports books against each other. Some books are historically proven to set much more accurate lines than others. So basically we are just comparing the odds of the more accurate books to the odds of the less accurate books, which place a lot of mispriced lines. Uh, we usually find a slight value on the less accurate books when we're comparing the sharp books to the less sharp books. But positive EV betting literally takes zero knowledge about sports betting to make money. I've made thousands of dollars betting Major League Baseball this year, and I've yet to watch a single game. Most of the edges found sports betting are between 1 and 3%. This might not seem that impressive to you, but playing with a consistent edge at a very high volume uh, will yield you a massive amount of profits. The goal of a positive EV better is to place as many bets as possible every day that have a perceived edge. Uh, this is pretty much the same business plan as any casino or table game that a casino might have. Uh, they create the house edge and then they push for as many bets as possible into that game. So let's just use blackjack for an example. The typical house edge is about 2%, uh, assuming that you're not counting cards, obviously, because then you can turn the edge into your favor, but let's assume you're a regular blackjack player. So every time the dealer deals out the cards and you place a bet, you are essentially losing 2% long-term to the casino. That means if you're playing blackjack, you're playing at a negative 2% expected value, which means for every $100 you wager, you're expected to lose $2. Now, obviously you don't lose $2 on every hand. Hell, you might even walk out of the casino with more money than you started, but that doesn't mean you ever had an edge. You might have made some money that day playing blackjack, but if you count everyone that played blackjack that day in the casino, then it's almost guaranteed that the casino made about 2% on every dollar bet. It just means that you got lucky that day, and if you walk out of the casino with profits and you think that you're just a better blackjack player than most people, then the casino has you exactly where they want you. Next time you show up, you'll most likely give back all your profits. I don't mean to go on a tangent about blackjack, but it's an example that most people can relate with, and it's nothing I really thought about until I discovered positive EV sports betting, and they're so similar in a lot of ways. Like I said earlier, the house edge is about 2% on every hand, so you're pretty much paying 2% of every dollar that you bet per hand. Let's imagine a game where they ask you how much you want to wager, let's just say you say $100, and then they just take $2 from you and give you back 98, then immediately ask you how much do you want to wager again. Obviously no one would play that game because you're just losing every single hand, but that's basically how blackjack is set up. The cards and decisions you make playing blackjack is just an illusion to make the players think that they have an actual edge or some chance of winning long term. And sports books are doing the exact same thing, but the illusion is letting the bettors make their own decision based on their research, but that research has already been done by the sports books and all of that research has already been priced into their odds. I like to view myself as a casino or a blackjack dealer because I typically have a 2% edge with my sports bets. My goal is to deal out as many hands as possible with this edge because large numbers are your friend when you're dealing with small edges. As the dealer, I might deal out 10 hands of blackjack and lose 8 of them, but that doesn't mean I should stop dealing cards. If I deal out 10,000 hands, then it's almost guaranteed that my actual value will equal my expected value long term. Why do you think they have the fastest dealers at the highest limit tables? They can make much more money if they're dealing out more hands. This is a concept that a lot of people struggle with because if they lose 8 out of 10 sports bets that they made, they just assume that strategy doesn't work. 
In reality, they just haven't placed enough bets to overcome variance and realize their actual value. Picking winners and overcoming the big sportsbooks add to their line is nearly impossible to do. To be profitable finding your own plays, you need to outsmart a billion dollar company with thousands of employees and way more resources and data points than you have. Once you figure out how to do that, then you need to overcome the tax that they charge, which is usually four or 5%. Basically, you need to be four or 5% smarter than these billion dollar companies. I've accepted the fact that I'll never outsmart them with my own knowledge and research. Instead of trying to beat the sports books uh, on my own, I use the odds and prices that the sharp books set and simply find outliers to the retail books. Betting with such a small edge, like one or 2% can result in some massive variance. The downswings can be brutal and a lot of inexperienced bettors do not have the mental strength to continue betting with a strategy that is not currently yielding profits. I've seen some people start positive EV sports betting and be down after close to 1,000 bets. If they are positive EV betting correctly and finding actual edges, then things will turn around and their expected value long-term will match up with their actual value. To summarize, positive EV betting is successful because you're finding small edges in the sports betting market. Small edges are extremely profitable when you can place them at a high volume. During the winter months, when there are a bunch of sports going on at the same time, you can easily find over 100 positive EV bets in a single day. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe so you can catch the next one that I post. Uh, we're trying to put out one or two YouTube videos per week throughout the course of the football season, and they're all gonna be about positive expected value strategies. I'm also hosting weekly live streams on outlier.bet on their Twitch account and sharing the best positive EV plays I can find with the viewers. So thanks for watching guys, uh, go check out some other videos I have, let's go make some money.